are greyhounds destructive? Today on the Greyhound Home Care Channel. Hi, it's Gail here to answer your question about whether or not greyhounds are destructive. Few people are going to look at the elegant, docile greyhound and imagine that he'd ever destroy anything in the house, right? Well, looks can be deceiving. On the list of the top 15 most destructive dogs, the greyhound actually ranks 11th. The root cause of most greyhound vandalism is anxiety. Don't despair, fellow greyhound lover, because Greyhound Home Care is here with insight and solutions from personal experience as well as that of experts. Destructive behavior from a greyhound can be everything from some innocent paper shredding to full-blown domestic breakage. Greyhound puppies are jokingly known as land sharks. The destructive adult greyhound is more like a beaver, chewing doors, cabinets, window frames, furniture. Sometimes they even forget their house training. In rare cases, they've even been known to break windows. Now, before you get completely scared off of getting a greyhound, keep in mind that the root cause of most greyhound vandalism is anxiety, usually separation anxiety. Every account I've ever heard of a greyhound rampaging through the home has occurred when the dog was home alone. And this doesn't mean you can never leave your greyhound home alone. Many greyhound owners need to be out of the home for a good part of the day and have never encountered this problem. The story typically goes one of two ways. Either it's a new greyhound in the home, or the greyhound has been home for a while, even years sometimes, but then the owner has a change in his schedule which keeps him out of the home longer than what the greyhound is used to. Prevention is the best cure for a destructive greyhound. On the first day you get your greyhound home, practice leaving and coming back many times. Be gone for longer each time, and be sure to greet him with a good dog and a cookie every time you come back. Because of your schedule, you might have a limited window of opportunity to work on this, but the more you can do it, the better chance you have of having a vandalism-free experience with your greyhound. Remember, your greyhounds live the kennel life. He's always been surrounded by his fellow greyhounds in the safe confines of his kennel. Your home is this huge, overwhelming, solitary space, and when the sensitive greyhound's left alone there, he can become very anxious. Your greyhound loves your presence. He depends on you, and he might fear that you're not coming back. The perfect solution for my household ended up being a very large crate with easily washable, expendable bedding. I was about halfway through the life of my second greyhound and had cleaned up many accidents before I discovered this. Shannon was a very large greyhound, and he hated being home alone. The crate was a real game changer for him. We would lure him off his bed with a treat, pick up the bed, set up the crate in its place, and then throw the bed into it. Then we'd toss the cookie onto the bed, and he'd lumber right in and settle down, just like our Lily does today. Shannon was a bit more of the anxious type than Lily, so we added an old alarm clock, the kind you can wind up, and it ticks. Shannon always found this very soothing. By the time I brought home my third greyhound, Lily, we had a bed set up for her right in the crate waiting for her. Since greyhounds sleep all the time anyway, she took to this like a duck to water. It's very cushy, it has an orthopedic gel pad, and a nice thick quilt, and several washable pillows. My neighbor calls it her condo. Whenever the house is going to be empty, I just throw a cookie into Lily's uh, condo, and she zips right in, enjoys her treat, and settles right down. I go to the radio, switch on some classical music. Hey, don't underestimate the power of classical music. It seriously engages the greyhound's brain. Anyway, leave a few lights on for her, and then she's fine. This way, I know she's not going to nibble anything poisonous, destroy anything, or hurt herself. If she has an accident, cleaning up is a simple matter in this environment. If I have to be away for more than four hours, I will arrange for somebody to come in and check on Lily and, you know, hang out with her for a few minutes, get her out for a little walk, give her a snack, you know, before returning her back to her condo. This has worked absolutely flawlessly for five years now. One thing that can feed into the anxiety of your greyhound is your own anxiety about leaving him. If you can leave with a cheerful air of confidence, your greyhound will settle in much better, and crate time will just be another nap time. Another huge advantage of crating is that you can put a camera on your dog and see how he's doing at all times. I guarantee you, you're just going to see your dog fast asleep, just like he is when you're home. If your greyhound seems to need a little more help settling in, you can always put a Kong toy in there with a little peanut butter stuffed way down at the end, or you can add something you've worn. Be sure it's something rather large, like a large t-shirt or a sweatshirt. Please, no socks. I have at least two dogs right here in my own neighborhood who are chronic sock swallowers. And as they say, it's all fun and games till somebody ends up in a cone. In my research for this article, I found a couple people who were very much against crating a greyhound, even expressing fear that an anxious greyhound could completely flip out in the crate and hurt himself, although I noticed they didn't cite any proof or even anecdotal evidence of this ever happening. 
I'm sorry to be blunt, but this is simply a crackpot notion. I can't think of any other way to put it. Perhaps other breeds may struggle with being crated, I can't say, but greyhounds are very at home in their crates. A greyhound's favorite activity is sleeping, as in over 20 hours a day. That's how we figured out that it would be such a good solution for Shannon. All he ever did all day was laze around in his bed anyway. It wasn't the crate that he hated. It was being taken away from his beloved bed. Once we placed the crate in his usual sleeping spot and placed his bed into it, we could barely get him out of there. Another suggestion I ran into, which I disagree with, is to leave your dog roaming around the house alone all day wearing a muzzle. Even more ignorant, the justification for this was, well, they're used to being muzzled. Well, they're not used to being muzzled for hours at a time. They're muzzled to race, and then when they're turned out in a group to relieve themselves, for minutes, not for hours. The dog who's crated will learn to just settle down and take a nap till you return, but a dog that's stuffed into a muzzle, that's always there, right on his face. Besides, what a determined, anxious greyhound cannot do with his teeth, he's going to do with his great, strong claws. There are a few additional types of greyhound destruction that you should know about. Digging, landscape damage, shredding, soiling, and nesting. Digging. Many greyhounds love to dig in the yard. At the racing kennel, it's not unusual for greyhounds to have quite a project going in there in their turnout area. Every time they come out, some of them will get together and, and spend a little time digging in the holes they've made. It's fun. My greyhound Shannon used to love digging out a shallow crater for himself somewhere in the shade to lie in on hot days. Peaches used to just like to dig for the heck of it. You could tell she was having a grand time. Landscape damage. Landscape damage can occur when your dog runs around and around and creates his own racing oval in your yard. Nobody can pull dirt like a greyhound, and when they turn those corners, you'll see chunks of turf flying left and right. This isn't intentional damage, it's just a consequence of your dog doing what he does naturally. So please don't discipline your dog for this. Shredding. Many greyhounds love shredding paper. The best solution for this is to figure out what they enjoy shredding the most, and find an innocent way for them to do that supervised, of course. Peaches was partial to my bills. Maybe she sensed the antagonism while I was sitting there paying them. We finally settled on me paying the bill while she shredded the envelope, and we never had another problem with it. Our dog Shannon had this hedgehog, and he used to love unstuffing it. We'd gather up the stuffing and stuff it back into the old hedgy skin, as we called it, and he'd do it all over again. It was great fun. He restricted his shedding to that one particular toy, and then we never had a problem with him either. Soiling. There's often a medical issue present when your greyhound suddenly breaks his house training. Before I got better at preventing UTIs, these were often the culprit of that dreaded puddle. If your greyhound soils his bed, he may have a mobility issue brewing. Check his paws for cuts, splits, embedded objects, corns, broken claws, or injury. Gently flex his joints to check for arthritis. Sometimes it's as simple as adjusting his walk or turnout schedule, especially if you're blessed with extra time with your greyhound. Once he hits 12 or so, you might find that your old friend is more comfortable if he can relieve himself regularly every six hours. By this point in Shannon's life, he'd spot his bed up a little bit. I solved this by covering his bed with baby crib sheets, a waterproof one and a regular one. He didn't move around much, so I was even able to slip a large disposable pee pad under him. This made everything simple to clean up. This can be tough, but it's only for a little while. Embrace it and cherish your time together. There's nothing as sweet as an elderly greyhound. Nesting. If you see your dog digging up his bed, provide him with a big old quilt or a couple of blankets so he won't shred the dog bed that you bought for him. In this case, your dog's not trying to destroy, but to build. He's trying to create a cozy nest for himself. All that said, greyhounds are not often very destructive, but now you'll know what to do if an incident occurs. Most important, remember that prevention is the best cure. For further suggestions, just type dog separation anxiety into your favorite search engine. Thanks for watching, and see you next time on the Greyhound Home Care Channel. Yeah.